Good morning. I don't know if you can hear that, but the birds are chirping. It's 8.35 a.m. my time here in America. Northern Illinois, to be specific with you. Here's a question for you. Who rules the world? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he's the one who rules the world. But he allows the devil to run roughshod over the world for judgment on, upon the world. And with that being said, who controls everything? The Jews or the Jesuits? Hmm. I have been noticing a lot lately a lot of people <laughs> um, saying that the Jews are the ones who rule the world. The Jews are in control of everything. It's the Jews. It's the Jews. Uh, no, dear friend, it is the Catholics, the Jesuits. It is the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, that rules the world, so-called. And they are being allowed to as judgment upon this earth, okay? People who like to say that the Jews are in control of everything, like the Jews <laughs> created the Illuminati, uh, that the Jews run the banks, <laughs> and <laughs> the most brilliant one that I've heard recently, of course, that the Jews <laughs> created the Jesuits. <laughs> Oh, uh, wow, yeah. Today, dear friends, we are going to go into the scriptures, and we've got a few other resources. I'm going to read um, the Extreme Oath of the Jesuits, and also a portion of uh, just a small chapter out of the Secret History of the Jesuits. Today, through the scriptures... Lord willing, it will be proven unto you that it is not the Jews who are the most powerful who rule the world today. No, you will see that it is the Jesuit order, Roman Catholicism, Satan. And Satan is allowed to do so as judgment against this world. See, people who hate the Jews fall into two categories. Ones who are either ignorant or those who are lost, devils. Okay? And when you look into it, those who hate the Jews and accuse the Jews of being the powerful world organizations today or whatever, they always trace back to Catholicism. Catholicism teaches what is called replacement theology. Uh, if I can remember, I will put uh, links in the description box for that. Uh, uh, the Lord let me to do two videos dealing with replacement theology. Replacement theology is that spirit of Antichrist. Okay, that's what that is. Um, to be Antichrist is one, to be against Christ, but number two, to replace Christ. Okay, hence... Roman Catholicism, they teach you that there is no salvation outside the church, and when they say church, they mean the church building, and they themselves, okay? That is what Roman Catholicism teaches you. Roman Catholicism teaches that the church has replaced the Jew, and that the time of Jacob's trouble is actually the great tribulation there for the purification of the church, Okay? And those who, number one, also deny the Holocaust through either ignorance, whether pure ignorance or willful ignorance, or being a lost devil. Okay? Those who deny the Holocaust, usually every time you will find a link back onto Catholicism. Okay? I remember um, somebody who, um, uh, uh, a while ago, I think about two or three years ago, the Lord allowed me to do a three-part video series on the Holocaust. 
And uh, this one guy <laughs> who I used to know um, got a hold of me on one of his drunken stupors and said that I lied about the six million Jews and whatnot, that, that your v video on the Holocaust was full of lies. And I'm like, okay, well, name one. And then, of course, oh, there's just so many, just so many to name. People can deny the Holocaust out of ignorance, pure ignorance or willful, or that they're devils. Okay? They have an agenda. Because Roman Catholicism, they deny the Holocaust. Roman Catholicism denies the Holocaust. They were the ones responsible for it. And see, one of the tactics of Satan is to vilify God's chosen people, the Jew. The Jew is still the apple of God's eye, people. Okay? And what Satan is doing, and through all these people who say it's the Jews, the Jews control the uh, want to establish the new world order. The Jews control the Illuminati. The Jews created the Jesuits. <laughs> um, these people are either ignorant, out of pure ignorance, or willful, or they are working for the Vatican. There's no, there's no gray area there. It's either or for these people. Okay, so today, like I said, we are going to go through the scriptures, and I'm going to show you, Lord willing, the Lord is going to throw, uh, show you, excuse me, Lord willing, that it's not the Jews, it's Satan. And what is Satan's church? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That be Roman Catholicism. And Roman Catholicism's army it's the Jesuit order. Okay? They are the ones that are in control of everything. Okay? Now, with that introduction, <laughs> so to speak, get a copy of the scriptures. The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, called. This is God's pure and errant, given by inspiration, word of God, written in English, and I believe to be translated from English into other tongues. Okay? Go ahead and get a copy of the scriptures. Don't, don't get a Bible. A Bible. NIV. ESV. New American Standard. Or what, the, the pantheon of uh, Bibles out there. Get the scriptures. Okay? First, what we are going to do, we are going to uh, examine the scriptures here as to why it cannot be the Jews who control everything. Okay? There are many people out there. Uh, what is that? The, there's that one Jewish man who is a traitor to his people, that brother Nathaniel guy who keeps talking, it's all the Jews, it's all the Jews. He's a Jew himself, a traitor to his own people. Just like George Soros the guy who created, funded Black Lives Matter. He's a Jew. And you look up on him, um, he betrayed his own people and served the Nazis. And there are those out there who will say like, well, what about the Roth Rothschilds? Jews. They work for the Vatican. Yes, they do. There are stupid Jews out there who serve the Vatican, who work for the Vatican. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. Not denying that, okay? There are some really stupid Jews that work for the Vatican and serve the Vatican. The Rothschilds. Yes, they do. Okay? The Rothschilds, obviously. That's the biggest one. Okay? But also Bernie Sanders, a Jew who is a Mason. The Masons are controlled by the Jesuit order. Okay? Also a traitor to his people. Let me, let me give it to you like this. For a Jew, a Hebrew, to serve the Vatican is the equivalent of a Hamite, a black man, serving the Ku Klux Klan. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty sharp, isn't it? That's, that's a comparison. Okay? That's a comparison. And yes, yes, there are. 
that are stupid. And I'm using that in the proper context. Stupid Jews who are serving the Vatican, working for the Vatican. Yes, there are. That cannot be denied. But they are not the ones who are controlling everything, that are dictating the things in the world. It is Satan, through his church, Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit Order, as allowed by our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, for judgment upon this earth. Okay? Are you with me so far? Now, that's enough of my talking. Let's get to some scripture. Okay? Turn in the authorized version of the scripture to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. We will be doing some reading here. We will be reading verses 12 on to verse 44 in Deuteronomy chapter 28. We are going to show why the Jews cannot be, cannot be the ones that are the ruling power on earth today. Okay? We are going to show you why that cannot be. Okay? So, please get an authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along in the scriptures, okay? It's very important that you do that. And I'm going to speak to you as though you are, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 28, beginning at verse 12. The Lord shall open unto to thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. This is him, um, Moses, telling the children of Israel the blessings for obedience. This is told unto a nation. Okay, The promises given unto Abraham are just that, unto a man. These are the promises and the curses given on to the nation of Israel. If they were to obey the Lord their God, our Father Jesus Christ, or not. Okay? You got to remember that. And the Lord shall make thee the head. The Jew. Talking to the Jew, the Hebrew. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou... Hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. And if you were to read in the book of Judges, <laughs> that's exactly what they have done what they did in history, and what they are doing today, okay? Absolutely. The books of First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, how the Jewish people rejected their own Messiah, God our Father, okay? That is a pattern throughout history, okay? All right? Look at verse 13. This is very important. And the Lord shall make thee the head... The head, self-explanatory, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. Okay? Let's pick up at verse 15 now. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. This is why the Jew, the Hebrew, cannot be the head. Okay? This is why the Hebrew, the Jew, cannot be in control of things today. Because God said so. Let's read this. Cursed 
shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the, the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The land, Israel, Jerusalem, and that kind of stuff, okay? The Lord shall smite thee with the consumption, and with a fever, and with inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. You read Psalm 102 one time, or sometime on your own time, okay? Perfect description of the plight of Israel, the Jew, okay? And the enemies that are mad against Israel, that are sworn against Israel, are Roman Catholicism, who are replacement theology. They want to vilify, they want to do away with the Jew because the Catholics tell you that there is no salvation outside the Roman Catholic Church. Salvation is of the Jews. More on that later. Okay, let's continue. And the heaven that is over thy head, verse 23, we're picking up at, shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. The diaspora, the spreading of the Jew throughout the entire world. Okay. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart. you got to remember, a lot of these have been fulfilled, but not to their fulfillment yet. That's coming during the time of Jacob's trouble. Well, let's continue. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. That's what the, um, through the Crusades, the Roman Catholic Crusades, what the Crusaders, with the crosses on their tunics, why the, oh, part of the reason why the Jew attributes to what is Christian, Onto Catholicism? That's why I'm not a Christian. Okay? It's very easy to understand why the Hebrew, the Jew, wants nothing to do with Christian anything to do with Christianity. Why? Because remember, Catholics are Christians. We who are saved, born again, converted, we are of the Church of the Living God. You know, new creatures in Christ Jesus. We're not Christians. Okay? Let's continue this. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Again, during the Crusades, the Catholic Crusades against Jerusalem, 
the Crusaders ravished a lot of the Jewish women. And as a result, making half-breed Jew Gentile. A lot of what the Crusaders did was so wicked, so evil, so satanic. It, it's, it, it's, it's a sh it, it ought to bring shivers upon your spine to utter some of the atrocities that the Crusaders inflicted upon the Jewish people. Much like how the other Crusaders, the Nazis of Germany, also afflicted upon the Jews in the Holocaust. And the Holocaust deniers will be quick to say, well, the Jews were not the only ones exterminated in the Holocaust. Uh, you're right. You're right. But see, the end justifies the means. The Jews were the primary target of the Germans. Nazi Germany. Catholic Nazi Germany in World War II. The Jews were the main target. And to get rid of, you know, Protestants and stuff like that. But nonetheless, the Jews were the primary target of Catholicism as it is today. Okay? Let's continue. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. Read the book Night by Eli Wiesel about his um, journey through the Holocaust and also a very telling thing about the Holocaust, and I've talked about this before in other videos, right before the Holocaust of the Jew in World War II, you look at the state of the Jew, the Israel, of Israel, the Hebrews. They were reading the Talmud. They were practicing Kabbalistic magic. What are the Jews in Israel today on the majority, on the grand scale doing? Practicing Kabbalistic magic, reading the Talmud. Not all of them, obviously, not all of them. There are some Orthodox Jews who are uh, adhere to the scriptures, scriptural Judaism, not a Judaism that involves Torah, meaning all the writings of the rabbis, the Talmud. When in scripture, um, the Torah is the first five books, the Law of Moses, not encompassing the writings of the rabbis, the Talmud and stuff like that, and Kabbalistic magic, okay? you got to remember these things. But on a whole, just as before the Holocaust of the Jew, what were the Jew doing? Kabbalistic magic and reciting the Talmud, stuff like that. Read uh, the book by Eli Wiesel, Eli Wiesel, Night. Fascinating book, very eye-opening, okay? Now let's continue. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with the sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Note how in verse 13 where it says, And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Look at the order here in verse 35. That the Lord shall, the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs. In the knees meaning to get them to be pentient, to kneel, to bow, to get on their knees, to be broken. Yes. With a sore botch that cannot be healed from the, look at the order, from the sole of thy foot onto the top of thy head. It begins at the foot onto the top of the head. While the order here in verse 13 is they would be the head and not the tail. But the condition was they had to obey. And that was said unto the nation of the Israel, the Jew. Okay? Let's continue. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there thou shalt serve other gods, wood and stone. Verse 36. Put that into the equation of these traitorous Hebrews, these traitorous Israelites who yoked themselves up with the Vatican. Like I said, 
to get the point across to you. You can compare that as to an Hamite, a black man, working for and serving the Ku Klux Klan. And those of you beloved brethren that are of Ham, put that into the equation. That's the abhorrency of a Jew, a Hebrew, an Israelite, serving the Vatican. Okay? And verse 36, look at these Jews that have sold out their nation. Bernie Sanders, who's a Mason. Okay? George Soros. Okay? The Rothschilds. Yes, there are some evil, stupid, wicked Jews who have bowed their knee to Rome. Woe be to, uh, woe be to those of Israel that bow their knee unto the Vatican. Your father, the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, uh, God have mercy on you. Let's continue. And thou shalt become an astonishment, verse 37, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall send thee. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine oil shall cast his fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locust consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Okay? Look at that verse. The stranger, someone who is not of Israel, i.e. a Gentile. The stranger that is within thee, mingled amongst Israel, shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. And here it is, verse 44, as to why the Jew, the Hebrew, the Israelite, cannot be the ruling power today. He shall lend to thee, Gentile, unto the Jew, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail. This dispensation is the time of the Gentiles. The Gentile being grafted in to the tree of the Jew, to the tree of the Hebrew. Okay? And we see right there in verses 43 and verse 44, look at them. Don't look at me, look at them. That is why the Jewish people, the Hebrews, that is why they cannot be the ruling power today. They cannot be. It's Roman Catholicism, as allowed as judgment from the Lord. Okay? Now, Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. There are those who like to go to other sources, but see, when it comes unto the Hebrew, the Jew, okay? When it comes unto the Jew, you need to go to the scripture. You need to go to the scripture. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 15 on to verse 26. Okay? But Jeshurun, Jeshurun means well favored, highly favored. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation, 
Uh, verse 15 is talking about when the Jewish people reject their Lord, the rock of their salvation. And the church is built upon Christ Jesus, not Peter. Jesus is the rock. Peter is a small stone. The parable where our Lord spake in uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Sermon on the Mount, which is the constitution of the kingdom of heaven, okay, after the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, um, those who build their house upon a rock, Jesus Christ, when the winds blow, it ain't going to fall. But those who build their house upon the sand, sand is a collection of minuscule stones. Peter, a small stone. Uh, the winds will blow and great will be the fall of it. Okay? Okay? But see, the Jews who were fi are highly favored of God, if they rejected the Lord, these are the consequences. Okay? And verse 15, the Lord refers on to his own people as Jeshurun, high favored. And that what? They wax fat, fat and kicked. The danger of prosperity. Let's continue. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils. Not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of that capital R, rock, that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Capital R, rock. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, and that is Christ Jesus. Okay? And that rock that followed them was Christ, the anointed one, Jesus. Okay? And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God, the work of their own hands. Okay? They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not my people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. A foolish nation. Okay? I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, people who our Lord originally chose not, Gentiles, okay? We're going to be reading in Romans chapter 11 here in a little bit, but remember this, okay? I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Uh, some of these Messianic Jews, they hate us Gentiles, and if you've ever seen a truly saved, born-again, converted Jew of the Church of the Living God, that jealousy, you'll see it. I've seen it. I've experienced it. That you Gentiles, you know, you Gentiles, that's, that's our God. I know. But see, we're the foolish nation, the Gentiles, that have been brought in to make you jealous, to bring you back to your Lord that you're supposed to see in us. And are the Jews seeing their Lord in us when we say God loves you and God's not going to judge you? Think about it. A Jew who is versed in their scriptures, when they come to Deuteronomy and also in Leviticus chapter 26, I believe it is, um, 25 or 26 when they're in, um, they know that their God is a God of judgment. And that the Jesus that is being preached unto them by the Christians? It's like, do you wonder why these Jews are like, your God is a nice God, our God is... <laughs> no, it's one and the same God. But see, the God, the Jesus that a lot of the Jews are thinking that um, we of the Church of the Living God follow, that's the son of perdition. That's not, a, that's not our God, and that's not their God either, see. The, the God who God loves you. 
the God has there the you know God has totally abandoned the Jew and it's for the church. That's Roman Catholicism. No truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God would ever be anti Shemitic. A babe newly saved in ignorance might be thinking, well, well, yeah, the, the Jews are, no. In ignorance for the babe, grace, show grace. And you have the Church of the Living God, inform them of the importance of the Jew. The Jew is the apple of God's eye, okay? But someone who has been a Christian for over 25 years and denies the Holocaust and hates the Jews, eh, guess what? They ain't saved, but rather they're Christians, just like their mother is Roman Catholicism. Let's continue. Reference on to the Holocaust here. Verse 22, a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn unto the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Mountains, the foundations of the mountains, likened unto people who are high up, lofty, who are just run. The, the Holocaust of the Jew in Nazi Germany was a judgment allowed unto his own people by God for their rejection of their king, their Messiah. I have, I have videos, prove, I have a video on where was God uh, proving that through the scripture, absolutely. Absolutely. The Holocaust <clears throat> was judgment. Judgment from our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, upon his own people for they, for they rejecting him. And the worst yet is going to be the seven-year time period of Jacob's trouble. After we, the church of the living God, comprised of both Jews and Gentiles, gets redeemed, caught up. Okay, when we get caught up, that time of Jacob's trouble... The seven-year time period? It's going to make the Holocaust look like nothing. The Jews today say, never again. It's coming again. And you Jews out there of Israel, truly Israel, Hebrews, the, you, know, you know, as well as I, the Jesus, the Christianity today, that's not your God. That's not the faith of your God. No, no. The faith of your God, your God is given to you in your book, the authorized version of the scriptures. And the New Testament is the testimony of your king, your God, your father. Verse 23 in Deuteronomy 32. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, famine, a food, and be devoured with burning heat. Again, referencing the Holocaust and the Holocaust that is coming, the time of Jacob's trouble. And with bitter destruction, I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them, like the Eustachi, the Croatian Eustachi, uh, uh, that, there are, that made the Nazis themselves blush because of how brutal they were. Okay? I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without... And terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. The diaspora, the spreading out of Israel because of their disobedience and rejection of their God. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Now let's look at a little hope here. Verse 27. I know I said on the verse 26, but verse 27. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, 
God does not fear man. No. What is he talking about? That man, that the enemies that he allowed to persecute his own people would exalt themselves saying, I did this by my own power. I, like King Nebuchadnezzar, before the Lord humbled him and before he was saved, King Nebuchadnezzar, is not this great Babylon that I have built by my power, for my glory and majesty? See, that's what he's talking about in verse 27. That the enemies that he allowed to afflict his people, the Jew, in the Holocaust and the time coming, they exalt themselves, saying, I done this by my own power. No, you are allowed to do so by the Lord Jesus Christ, who is truly in control. But see, our Lord Jesus Christ, as judgment, is allowing Satan, the little g-god of this world, to run, ram uh, run rampant today. Okay? You do not afflict the Jew or the church of the living God without God allowing it. Nothing happens without God say so, without him knowing it. Okay? So when he says, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, meaning that they would get high on themselves saying, well, I did this myself. That's what he's referring to. Lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. That verse is very self-explanatory. I should have kept my mouth shut and let the scriptures explain itself. Excuse me for that. But nonetheless, that is what he's talking about, exactly what he said there. And the Germany and the German Nazis, Rome, got really high on themselves. You read some of the writings of the Third Reich Nazi Germany. That how um, the the German, the Nazi party uh, boasted itself as adhering itself to the pure principles of the Vatican. And you hear that Hitler was an atheist. No, Hitler was a Catholic. Hitler was a Catholic. Goebbels, or whatever, uh, the guy who uh, created uh, Himmler, or whatever his name was, um, patterned the SS after the Jesuit order. I think it was Himmler. I think. I, I can't I get the names mixed up. But uh, uh, even Hitler himself said of him that he is our Ignatius of Loyola. The guy who uh, created the SS. He fashioned it after the Jesuit order. And the spiritual exercises. Okay? It's Rome that controls the world. To Jew, okay? Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 21. And it came to pass when I prophesied, Ezekiel that Pelatiah, the son of Benaiah, died. Then I fell down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? See, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, has given unto Israel a remnant, a remnant, all of Israel, that remnant that's going to survive the time of Jacob's trouble, all Israel, that remnant, that's what he refers to, okay? Um... There's a remnant that's going to make it, okay? And here Ezekiel, who was a, a prophet in captivity, beg your pardon, who was a prophet in captivity amongst his own people, the Jew, cried out for his own people. What does it say there? Wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? Verse 14, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Thy brethren, even thy brethren, the men of thy kindred, and all the house of Israel, holy, are they unto whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, Get you far from the Lord. Unto us is this land given in possession. And as they are warned in the book of Deuteronomy, don't think too highly of yourself, because it's the Lord that gave you this. 
Jeshurun. High favored, well favored. And you got to be aware about when the Lord favors you because what happens? You can grow fat and kick and lightly esteem the rock of your salvation, thinking that it's your thing that you're doing, your ministry, your this, your job, your career, your house, your whatever, your land. Um, if the Lord give it to you, why are you boasting as though you have not received it? Let's continue. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen, okay, and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. See, we have looked in Deuteronomy. The Jew cannot, according to Scripture, cannot be the ruling power in the world today. It's, God said, the, the heathen, the Gentile, will be the head. Okay? The Jew, God, the apple of God's eye, will be the tail for judgment for them rejecting him. Yes. The severity of God for those who reject him. Yes, even of his own people, the apple of his eye, the Jew. And these Christians think that they're going to get, they're not saved anyway. But, okay, okay, but even that, our Lord God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ is merciful. He will not forget his own people. This is hope, okay? In Deuteronomy alone, what we have already looked at proves proves that it's not the Jew who is ru ruling the world at this moment, okay? Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, he is in control, he is in charge, he rules the world, but, as, and we're going to see this, he has allowed Satan, the devil, and his church, Mystic, Mystery Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuit order, to run rampant, Ramshot or whatever upon the earth right now for judgment, okay? Not his own people, not the Jew. And what we've looked at in Deuteronomy categorically proved to you that that cannot be the case. These people who are telling you that the Jew, you know, I beg your pardon for this. I'm just going to say it as I've seen it. The Jew world order, uh, the Jews created the Jews. <laughs> These people who say that, they're either ignorant, either pure or willful, or they're working for the Vatican. And if someone is truly saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus of the church of the living God, that ignorance of the Jew will be resolved quite quickly. That leaves only one other option, boy, that they work for the Vatican themselves. They're coadjutors or Jesuits themselves. Let's continue this, okay? Verse 17. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. In 1948, got a video on this. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 36 talks about Israel, the Jew, being brought back to their land in unbelief. Okay? If I can remember, I'll try, try to link the video for that in this, in, in this as well. Okay? But, I already talked about that before. But, he brought back the Jew to Israel in 1948 in fulfillment with scripture and prophecy, uh, excuse me, and prophecy, he brought him back in unbelief. Why? Because they are the apple of, it, of his eye. He cannot forget his own people. Let's continue. And they shall come thither. And they shall take away all the detestable things thereof. And all the abominations thereof from thence. Has that happened today in Israel? No. This, verse 18, future prophecy. And I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you, 
And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and will give them an heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them and they shall be my people and I will be their God. Has that happened today? No. Future prophecy to be fulfilled in the future after the time of Jacob's trouble. When our King, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, comes down with us, his church, okay, the church of the living God, to rule and reign in Jerusalem for a thousand years, okay? Midway during the time of Jacob's trouble, there are Jews that are going to realize the truth that we of the church of the living God who adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures were the ones telling them the truth. Okay, those are the ones who are going to wake up and get that. But there are also going to be Jews, verse 21, But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense, S, recompense with an S, verb, their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. So you see future prophecy, future fulfillment coming for the Jew. Okay? Which is not yet. Will come, but not yet. Okay? Now, see, like we, like I said to you, we looked at Deuteronomy chapter 28 and also Deuteronomy chapter 32. Out proves beyond a shadow of the doubt that the Jew cannot be the ruling power today. Can't be. It's Rome, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order. Okay, The most powerful, deadliest man on earth is Arturo Sosa, the black pope. And the Jesuit order seeks to rule the world by the volition of a single man. Today, Sosa, after we, the church of the living God, we, the church of the living God, get caught up, it's going to be that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? Romans chapter 11. So now people will be saying like, okay, okay, you showed us in Deuteronomy. Okay, okay, the Jew can't be the ruling power. Then God's done with his people. Devils like Stephen Anderson, Tex Mars, and a lot of these easy believers and heretics who say, who pretend to be uh, on the side of the Jews, they are against the Jews. They hate the Jews because they work for the Vatican. Okay? And there are some disgusting people out there who like to pretend that they're Jews. <laughs> yeah. Then people will say, well, then God is done with the Jew. No. <laughs> no. No. He is not. I also have, like I said, I'm going to put a lot of links in the video, in the description box of, of this video for you to consider. Okay? God is not done with the Jew. Not at all. See, that's what Stephen Anderson and that, what is it, um, uh, the new IFB preach. They hate the Jews because they work for the Vatican, okay? They're coadjutors, Jesuits themselves, I wouldn't be surprised, okay? All right? They work for the Vatican. They hate the Jew. Uh, Stephen Anderson, like many, say that the Holocaust was a fraud. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, some Jews died, of course, but it wasn't that many. Like some other people I've, I used to know. Who, who accused me of lying about the Holocaust, working for the Vatican, whose God is the wafer cookie. Okay? God is not done with the Jew. Prove it to you. Okay? Romans chapter 11. Verses 1 under verse 29. Okay? Verses 1 under verse 29. I say then, Hath God cast away his people? Is God done with Israel? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars and I am left alone and they seek my life. 
But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men, remnants, which we looked at in Ezekiel, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal, uh, Satan. What do you, what do you want? Satan, uh, Nimrod, Semiramis, the Roman Catholic Mary, Sosa, you name it, okay? Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Calvinism teaches elect and non-elect. That people are elect to go to heaven without their say-so, going to hell without their say-so, okay? Also got a video on that. If I can remember, I'll try to put it in this one too, okay? But the election of grace, God chose Israel, okay? In context, the election of grace is, in context, he's referring on to the Jew. You devil, easy believe some heretics, okay? That doesn't... Romans 11 is not written for the Jew for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The book of Romans is written unto us, the church of the living God, unto the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Okay? This is not written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. People, these devil, easy believism heretics want to say that portions of Romans is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Please don't fall for these devils. Okay, let's continue. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Now, in context, the election, okay? These are two different types from verse 5 and verse 7 here. God chose the way of the cross. Genesis 22, verse 8. God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay? God, from the beginning, in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, Genesis means beginning, God set and put in order the way of the cross. That does not mean that people from the Old Testament were looking forward to the cross. If that were the case, Peter would never have said, no, Lord, don't do this. They would, the, the, the disciples would have been like, oh, we, okay, we, we're sad to see you die, but we know you got to do this. No, they were not looking forward to the cross all the way in the, uh, in the Old Testament. That's also a lie by these Jesuit coadjutors, okay? No, but... God chose the way of the cross. He elected the way of the cross. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. He chose. He elected the way of the cross. That is the election that is being mentioned in verse 7, which differs from the election the Jew as the apple of God's eye in verse 5. Beware these devil, wicked Calvinists with their election. Beware of it. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 8. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Why? Because they rejected their God, their Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Father. Okay. And David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense, see, a noun, unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. Why? To provoke them to jealousy. We, the Gentile, 
the mystery that Paul talks about of the church of the living God. It's not the mystery that Catholics talk about. What is the mystery? That us Gentiles would be grafted into the tree of the Jew. That's the mystery. Okay? That is the mystery that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 7 to be exact, which talks about how things were hidden from ages, to, uh, uh, former ages and stuff like that. Okay? Let's continue. But see this? Verse 11, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentiles, that's us, to provoke them to jealousy. We have been grafted in there to their tree. Why? To make them jealous. And people, do you think the Jew is jealous of Christianity? God loves you. The church building think the Jew is jealous of Catholicism. And see, that plays into also about that man of sin, the son of perdition. Catholics hate the Jews. There are Catholics out there who don't even think about the Jews, but Catholicism in a whole hates the Jew. They want to replace the Jew because it's Satan's church. But in order for Satan to pacify the Jew during the time of Jacob's trouble, I already got a video on this as well, that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to be a Jew himself in order to placate the Jew because the Jew will not accept a Gentile Messiah. Okay? Let's continue. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? When the Jew, during the time of Jacob's trouble, realizes that they made a big oopsie, and that we, the church of the living God, have been telling them the truth the whole time. That their eyes are finally open during the time of Jacob's trouble. That zeal that they're going to have for their God, knowing the truth. When you have ever met a truly converted Jew of the church of the living God, that jealousy, that jealousy is in them that we're part of their, of their tree. But nonetheless, that vehement zeal for the true, for the authentic, against the form. I've seen converted Jews go very hard against Christianity. And rightfully so. Because what is Christianity today is not of the church of the living God. Amen. Let's continue. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall be the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Ezekiel chapter 37, the valley of dry bones. Life from the dead. Okay? And check your margin here in your scriptures. There may be a reference on to Ezekiel chapter 37, Valley of Dry Bones. Uh, one second. Sorry, I had to make sure I was giving you the right reference. It is in Ezekiel chapter seven, uh, 37, the Valley of Dry Bones, life from the dead for Israel. Let's continue. For if the first fruit be holy, separate other, the apple of God's eye, holy means to be separate. Other, okay? The first fruit, Israel, the Hebrew. If the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, Gentiles here, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the roots, our Lord Jesus Christ, and fatness of the olive tree? Any one of you who claim to be, <laughs> you're a Christian, and you're anti-Semitic, replacement theology, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root. 
what is the root? No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, that is Jesus Christ. But the root, thee. Thou wilt say then, Catholics, Steve Anderson, uh, my dear friend from England, yeah, okay, yeah. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. See, replacement theology. What does Paul say? Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Perfect example. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, allowed his people, the apple of his eye, his elect, the Hebrew, to go through the Holocaust. He allowed Satan to do that to his own for judgment upon them for rejecting him. Church of the living God, brother and sister. How important, how important is being separate, holy to you? How important is that sin of yours? How important is that pride of yours? Hmm? If he would do that to his own people, and we, the Gentile, grafted in to make them jealous, start thinking we're a little bit more than we ought to be, uh -huh. Behold, verse 22, Therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Does that mean, does that mean loss of salvation? I don't believe so. Because today, someone of the Church of the Living God, if you are saved, born again, converted, you know, come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, godly sorrow, contrition, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon the name of the Lord and that he may save you, okay? Um, you mess around and start to be anti-Semitic and you're of the church of the living God. Um, what does Paul say in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5? To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Hmm? Because we're eternally secure in this dispensation if you are truly saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God. So what does that mean? Could that mean uh, also those who, uh, you know, were in the falling away, those who say they are of the church and the living God, but they were manifested to make uh, us of the church of the living God see that they weren't. See, that's First John chapter 2, verses uh, 18 on to verse 20. Go look them up. Let's continue. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, meaning the Jew can be brought back in again, especially during this dispensation. Okay? For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, wild by nature, meaning we, we the Gentile Catholic, are not the apple of God's eye. We've been grafted in, but it is to the Jew first. And oh, you replacement theology people, all those, you anti-Semitic people out there, you can't stand that. Those of you who like to blame the Jews, it's the Jew world order, or the Jews control everything, it's the Jews are the one who are bringing about this. The Jews are responsible for the uh, poison crown uh, pandemic. Uh. Come on. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, wert grafted in contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? When a Jew, a Hebrew, receive, you know, comes to the Lord Jesus Christ and believes on them, 
uh, believes on him, excuse me, as their chosen Messiah, their God, their king. You know, when you see a Jew receive the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and you see the light come on and the Lord save them, that, that's a precious thing to behold. An actually born again, saved, converted Jew of the Church of the Living God. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. What is the mystery? We've been looking at it. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. What is the mystery? That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. This is the time of the Gentiles. Why? Because the Gentiles are being grafted into the tree of the Jew. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer. Zion, synonymous with Israel, Jerusalem. Okay? And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. And as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, see, election, God chose the Hebrew. God chose Israel. Okay? Election. The, the, the Hebrew, Israel, is the apple of God's eye. He elected them. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. The other election that we saw is God elected the way of the cross. Okay? It's not Calvinism. Okay? But as touching the election, they are beloved. Why? For the Father's sakes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. He is not done with Israel. But... Um, according to the scripture, the Jew today, right now, is the tail. While the Gentile, especially the lost, are the head. In accordance with his judgment upon Israel for rejecting him. The Jew cannot be cannot be the power that rules today. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Why? God said so. God said so. Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Psalm 81, verses 8, under verse 16. Psalm 81, verses 8, under verse 16. Hear, O my people, people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, if there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. Does Israel today believe on our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Do they believe on their King, the Son of David, Jesus Christ? No, they reject Him today as a nation. There are Jews that have been saved. That it will be saved, yes. Even in this dispensation, yes. But as a nation, as a people, in, it, in their totality, no, they reject Jesus. Verse 11, But my people would, hearken, would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. 
Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied them. Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. Verses 1 unto verse 16. Isaiah chapter 49. Verses 1 unto verse 16. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. What is this talking about? Oh, Jesus Christ, God our Father. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me. What does that mean? Uh, the way of the cross was not revealed to the people during the Old Testament. During, under the law, under the dispensation of the law. Here's more proof of it. Okay, you got these people who say that they were looking forward to the cross all the way in Genesis. Boop, no, that's where our Lord made put it in motion, but they weren't looking forward to it. Because it was, it was hidden, it wasn't revealed. Okay, let's continue. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Israel is his servant. Israel is not the Messiah. Okay? Israel is to be a servant unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Is Israel of a whole today servant unto the Lord? Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. And now, saith the Lord, that formed me from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. Israel rejects him. But we Gentiles, like we looked at in Romans 11, get grafted in. Future prophecy of today's dispensation? Mm. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to, who, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nations abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. This is talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, obviously. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Now see, Catholics take this verse and twist that and turn it on to their Pope, the Vicar of Christ, who is another Christ. Okay, Vicar of Christ. Vicarious, whatever it is. Okay? People see the Pope as God. The Catholics see... Pope, the Pope is God. And remember, Francis is a Jesuit. And being a Jesuit, he is subservient unto Sosa. So Sosa is the true Pope of Rome. Deadliest man on the earth. Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages, that thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth, 
To them that are in darkness, shew yourselves. They shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the string, springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make a way, and I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinan. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. How did he do that? To our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. How will he do that? The kingdom of heaven. How? To their son of David, the king of Israel, Jesus Christ, the mighty, our God, our Father. But Zion said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. More proof that God has not cast away Israel. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Jesus Christ, when he was crucified, he was crucified through his hands, not his wrists. Okay? Through his hands and through his feet and bore a crown of thorns upon his head. I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Prophecy of the cross. See? God has not forsaken his people. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. Uh, uh, before we read Jeremiah chapter 33, okay, Jeremiah chapter uh, 33, we will be reading verses 14 on to verse 21, okay? But let's make a quick stop in Jeremiah 30, verses 6 and 8. Uh, 4. On to verse 9. Excuse me, in Jeremiah chapter 30. Verses 4 on to verse 9. And these are the word, words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus saith the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ask ye now, and see, whether a man doth travail with child? Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Why? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Who is Jacob? Israel. But he shall be saved out of it. The seven-year time period that's coming is the time of Jacob's trouble, not the time of the church. Okay? For it shall come to pass in, the, in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Now, Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 on to verse 21. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time will I cause the capital R, a capital B, branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. More prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved. And Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name where, wherewith she shall be called. The Lord our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord. 
David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall the priests, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, If ye can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne, and with the Levites, the priests, my ministers." During the time of the kingdom of heaven, the law is going to be reinstituted, I believe. Why? To give thank offering unto the Lord. Because he's going to be there personally. It's not going to be for the remission of sins and stuff like that, but it's going to be for thank offering. Plus, remember, um, I correct myself, um, during the kingdom of heaven, there will be those who sin. So, Forgive me for saying that. The law is going to be coming back during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? During the kingdom of heaven. The Sermon on the Mount. Okay? So yes, forgive me. I said that. I, I misspoke. Uh, I, I said an error there. Excuse me. During the kingdom of heaven, yes, offerings will be there again. Why? Because during the kingdom of heaven, it's works. You don't need faith when you can see the Lord on the throne. So you are going to be having to offer offerings and stuff like that during the kingdom of heaven. The law returns during the kingdom of heaven because it's all of works. Okay? Keep that in mind. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now, see, more proof that, number one, God is not done with Israel, but as we have already seen, as we have already seen, the Jew cannot be the head. The Jew cannot be the one ruling the world today. It's impossible. It's impossible. Matthew chapter 23. Like I said, during the kingdom of heaven, the law is going to be back. You are going to have to offer sacrifices during the kingdom of heaven. You are. Forgive me for misspeaking. Okay? That was an error. An oopsie. Forgive me. You are going to have to offer offerings during the kingdom of heaven. Because during the kingdom of heaven, it's works. It's works during the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Because our Lord Jesus Christ is going to be on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay? And you read the Sermon on the Mount, which is for the kingdom of heaven... It's all works. Matthew chapter 23, verses 31, unto verse 39. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up the, then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents! Ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah son of Berchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this specific generation. Upon this generation. The generation that he was specifically address, addressing right there. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he 
that cometh in the name of the Lord. And remember, Israel uh, as in a whole, totality, they're blind. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, they will see and they will be able to say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The Jew, dear people, are not running the world. Yes, there are Jews that work for the Vatican, traitors. Yes, there are very ignorant, stupid, wicked Jewish people out there who have sold themselves over to the Vatican. But it is Rome that is being allowed to rule today, not the Jew, in accordance with the scriptures that we already looked at. It's impossible. It's impossible. And if it were, you Christians, you know, who like to say it's the Jews, then that would mean God's book, God is a liar. When he said himself that they will be the tail and the stranger, Gentile, will be the head. It's not the Jew. Who is it? Oh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. We want verses 12 on the verse 15. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 on the verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Lucifer wants to be God. Uh, isn't the Pope considered God among the Catholics? Don't the Catholics say that there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church? I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter Luke chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 13. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when, he, and when they were ended, he afterward a hungered. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? Satan's temptations were aimed at the flesh, the skin suit, the word made flesh. The flesh is sinful. The flesh is weak. The flesh profiteth nothing, okay? Satan's temptation was aimed at the flesh. You got these devil coadjutors who make a big deal about the flesh of Jesus Christ. Why is that? Because their God is the Eucharist. Okay? And God manifest in the flesh, fasted 40 days. So he knew what it was like to be weak in that flesh through fasting. Then along comes Satan who favors the things that be of man, flesh, dirt, rather than the things that be of God. Okay? And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. God is their belly, remember, unto these lost people, flesh. Okay? Jesus answering, answered him, saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up 
into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, again going after the flesh, because God cannot be tempted with evil, but yet the devil is tempting our Lord Jesus Christ. What is he tempting? If God can't be tempted with evil, what was he tempting then? The flesh. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Um, where was it actually delivered unto him? Some will point to the Garden of Eden, but see, God is allowing him to do that. For judgment. Okay? And here is the payoff. Satan will give you everything. Right? But here's the payoff. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. You want the best of the flesh? You want the best of the world? Go ahead and serve Satan. Go ahead and serve his church, Roman Catholicism. You want the best of this world? Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, Thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from, heaven, from hence. For it is written, Satan quoting scripture to God the Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The word, Jehovah saves, made flesh. Hmm. He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. And see, Satan has been allowed to rule for judgment. And when we, the church of the living God, are taken out, he who now letteth will let the body of Christ, the church of the living God, until he... Be taken out of the way. The he that be taken out of the way is the church of the living God. God is omnipresent, omnipotent. He, he's not going anywhere. But his body is. We're going to be redeemed, caught up. Okay? But Satan is the one who is being allowed to rule the world right now. Who is in control. Being allowed to be in control. Okay? Always got to say that. Okay? Because nothing's going to happen without our Lord allowing it or knowing about it. Nothing's getting past him. If something happens here, it's because the Lord allows it. End of story. And Satan is being allowed to do things. Okay? You can't resist the devil unless you submit yourself unto God first. And God makes this distinction between his body, the church of the living God, which is comprised of both Jew and Gentile and those of the world. Okay? Go now to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Satan said, All this power will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me, all shall be thine. Right? Romans chapter 13, verses 1... On to verse 4. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that, are, that be are ordained of God. Yes, they are. Kamala Harris is ordained of God. Did you hear that? Kamala Harris is ordained of God. Never mind smoking Joe. Never mind him. Kamala Harris is ordained of God. Okay? 
So does that mean we submit to the government who wants to kill you that is run by the Jesuit order? <laughs> there are people out there who says, America is run by the Jews. <laughs> no, it's the Jesuits. Whoso for, whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So see, go ahead and roll them up, boy. Because Kamala Harris has been ordained of God. So we need to submit to her according to the scriptures. For rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minute... No, he. He. Male. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So, taking away our freedom, giving people to take the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Hmm. What, uh, so, is our American government good? <laughs> With abortion? Look at, look at what's happening in Texas. Texas did something against abortion. Great. But then you got all these demokamis um, coming along and uh, trying to fight it with abortion. Open sodomy and transgenderism with some of the... I've seen some of the... read some of these articles about uh, children and transgenderism that will just make your skin crawl. Abortion, transgenderism... Murdering people with the steel of the Jesuit poniard? Destroying the economy? Um, going against God? And we're supposed to adhere to that? Uh, Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. Okay? Verses 20. Not Ecclesiastes, beg your pardon, brethren. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 21. Huh? Excuse me. <laughs> 20 on to verse 23. What was I looking at? Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 23. Here is our American government. Woe unto them that call evil good. And good evil. that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink. Wine. Oh, like the wine from the goblet of Catholicism. Which justify the wicked for reward. Is that not what is happening in America? The wicked are being justified by the Jesuit controlled government? And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. So, in correlation, that's growing on me, sister. In correlation, in Romans chapter 3, verse 3, our American government is a terror to good works. They call evil good and good evil. The government that's being uh, spoken here is a government established by God, but yet um, doesn't call evil good and good evil. The Roman government in Jesus' time, uh, Pontius Pilate, was a just government. It really was. Pilate wanted to release Jesus. 
the Pharaoh before Exodus, before the Exodus, the Pharaoh that was alive when Joseph was alive was a just Pharaoh. Okay, he was. He was a just ruler. Okay, he didn't call evil good and good evil. The Pharaoh during the Exodus that was alive when Moses uh, and that kind of stuff, those Pharaohs ever since that, you liken on to Satan. Okay? But there are examples of this type of government within the scripture. And it ain't any of them today, especially the one in Australia. My, oh, excuse me. My goodness. <laughs> wow. Me, oh my. Wow. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Yeah. Because with order. Yeah. They, they are the hidden things of dishonesty. Okay? Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like coadjutors try to do. But by manifestation of the truth, can commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, that's a little g, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. See? So who is this little G God of, the, of this world? The devil, Lucifer, Satan. Okay? Satan hates the Jewish people. Okay? Um, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and verse 3. Okay? And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Those who are quickened, made alive, thank you, brother, are those who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Those who are been, those are those who have been quickened. Okay? And those who are dead in trespasses and sins are the lost people. Okay? Where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience are those who hear the truth and reject it. You hear the true gospel one time, you reject it one time, you're a child of disobedience. The love of God is not for you. The love of God is at Calvary. Okay? Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, nature, children of wrath, even as others. By, nat by nature, naturally, you're born into sin. You're born a sinner. You're a child of wrath by nature, unless you are born again. How? By something dying. What? Your self-righteousness. Having godly sorrow, it's your fault that he died. You're responsible. It's your fault. And in fear of the Lord, you know, that he's going to put you in hell, you call upon his name and may he save you. Okay? Go to Daniel. Go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. Oop, not Ezekiel. Not Ezekiel 11. Daniel chapter 11. We want verses 20 unto verse 24. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom, but with a, with but within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. 
and in his estate shall stand up a vile person, that man of sin, the son of perdition, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries, trying to flatter the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And with the arms of a flood, many people, they sh shall they be overflown from before him, and he shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. A small people? The Jesuits? Okay? He shall enter peaceably upon the fattest places of the providence, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. Not talking about Catholics. We'll keep, hold on. He shall scatter among them the prey, and spoil, and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. Okay? One second, please. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks, which translates to be seven years, are determined upon thy people and upon the, thy holy city, thy people and thy holy city, the Jews, Jerusalem, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy, the king who comes back. Thy holy, uh, what does that say? Thy people and upon thy holy city, the Jews, said Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble. It's not for the purification of the church as Catholics want you to believe. It's for the time, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for the Jews. Okay? Daniel 11, verses 36 on verse 39. And the king shall do according to his will. And he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god. Read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay, talking about that man of sin, the son of perdition. Inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. And shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods. And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the, regard the god of his fathers. And we just saw he'll do what his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. What does that mean? That man of sin, the son of perdition, who is going to lead the Roman Catholic Church, is going to make all kinds of history because he's going to be a Jew. He's going to be a Hebrew. Because the Jews, the Hebrews, will not accept a Gentile Messiah. They won't. They just won't. So that man of sin, the son of perdition, must be a Hebrew. The end justifies the means. For Satan to pull off the ruse for that man of sin, the son of perdition, he has to have his man, the son of perdition, that man of sin, be what he despises the most, a Jew. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, celibacy, okay, I believe. Could he be a sodomite? Uh, maybe. I'm more celibacy. Nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land for gain. Okay? So, 
that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist, is going to be a Hebrew. He's going to be a Jew. He has to be in order to, to fool the Jews that their Messiah has come. He has to be. So, Satan is going to have to become what he most despises the most. The Hebrews, the Jews. Okay? Now, Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Come on, fingers. Not the concordance. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2. Verses 8 on to verse 11. Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 11. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now these wicked replacement theology devils, these Holocaust deniers, will say, ah, see, it's the Jews, it's the wicked Jews. Of them which say they are Jews. The Jew, the Hebrew, is the apple of God's eye. For someone to say they are Jews, meaning that means that they are claiming to be the apple of God's eye. Roman Catholicism teaches that no salvation outside the, the Catholic Church, that the Great Tribulation is for the purification of the Church. They teach that the Church has replaced Israel. Roman Catholicism teaches that the church is the apple of God's eye, not the Jew. Where we, the Gentile, have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. But Catholicism tells you that they are the apple of God's eye. Hence, they, even though they are not saying we're Jews, they are calling themselves Jews. How? By replacing them. That they are the apple of God's eye. Steve Anderson, replacement theology. He's a Catholic, okay? He teaches that the Christians have replaced the, the, the Jew as the apple of God's eye. In effect, saying that he's, they're Jews, but yet he hates the Jews. See, to say you're a Jew, you're attributing unto yourself that you are of the apple of God's eye, that you are of the Hebrew. Okay? So, and if you're not, you're replacing, right? So, of them which say they are Jews. Catholics are not saying we're Jewish. We're Jews, no. But, they teach you, they tell you that they have replaced, that they are the apple of God's eye now, and not the Jew. Hence, calling themselves Jews. All you anti-Semitic people who hate the Jews, put that in your pipe and smoke it. And the synagogue of Satan? The Roman Catholic Church buildings? Because remember, the Catholics teach there is no salvation outside the Catholic Church. You got to go to a building. Synagogue of Satan? And I will be like the Most High. Satan's church, Roman Catholicism, replaces the Jew. That's what they teach. Fear, verse 10. Fear, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear to hear, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And while we're here, Revelation chapter 3, verses 7, 
on to verse 9. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, separate, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. Replacement theology, adherents, Catholics. Which say they are Jews and are not. No, they do not utter, we are Jews. You're right. You're right, you devils. But they teach replacement theology. They will be like the Most High. They are the... Uh, Catholicism teaches that they, the church, the Roman Catholic Church, is the apple of God's eye. They are saying they are Jews and they are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, to know that I have loved thee. Yes, and... Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Got to watch my time limit now. Talking about Roman Catholicism. Nothing Hebraic. Nothing Jewish. And there came Revelation chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels which had one, had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. All the rulers of the earth, the kings, uh, the presidents and what not, are they not going to Francis? Do they not go to Francis to have an audience with the Pope? All the rulers, nations of the world are going to the Vatican. They're going to Roman Catholicism to kiss the front man for Sosa, uh, his feet, Francis. Okay, The rulers of this world are seeking the audience of who? The Pope, not the Jews. They go to the Vatican, not Jerusalem. They go to Catholics. Not the Jews. Okay? So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman, Mother Church, sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. You look at the procession of the bishops and cardinals, purple and scarlet. Okay? There, those of you out there say, well, Rome's colors are white and gold. That's the front, purple and scarlet. You look at the procession of the uh, cardinals and bishops. It's purple and scarlet, okay? And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Gold and pearls, Roman Catholicism. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The, the amounts of people that Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church have murdered over the centuries is in the millions, including all of World War I, World War II, Everything, everything. They, Roman Catholicism, has persecuted the true church of the living God. Okay? You read Fox's Book of Martyrs sometime and see just what Satan's church have done to the church of the living God. Okay? You look at that sometime. The people that Roman Catholicism has murdered over the centuries, millions Dare I say, dare I say, including all the abortions, dare I say billions. Not the 
Jews. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The woman, the Roman Catholic Church, the beast, that old serpent, the devil, Satan. Okay? The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall, shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell in the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Rome is situated on the seven mountains, okay? It's Rome, the seven mountains of Rome. The original papal chair has been moved, by the way, so you know that, okay? The original papal chair... Where, where it says this, where the woman sitteth, the original seat of the papal chair was, sit, was situated on seven mountains. Is not Rome known as the city of seven hills? Yeah. There's even a limerick or a poem or something about Rome being the city of seven hills or something like that. Okay? And there are seven kings, there are seven kings, five are fallen and one is. And the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must come continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Again, today, presidents, kings, seeking an audience with who? The head rabbi in Jerusalem? Francis, the Pope, at the Vatican. It's not the Jews. It's the Jesuits. It's Roman Catholicism. Satan and his church. And the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Church, the Roman Catholic Church. And you read Revelation 18, the destruction of Roman Catholicism. And shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their heart to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, the Vatican, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Israel, Jerusalem, does not reign over the kings of the earth. It's Roman Catholicism. It's the Vatican. It is not the Jews. It's not the Hebrews. It isn't Israel. It's the Vatican. It's Rome. Okay? It can't be the Jew. Because, according to Scripture, because they have rejected their King, their Lord, their God, our Savior, our Father, Jesus Christ, because they have rejected Him, they are the tail. The Gentile is the head. They cannot be the ruling power today. It's impossible. Yes, some Jews will have sold themselves over to work wickedness with the Vatican. Yes, yes. The Rothschilds, uh, Bernie Sanders, and many others. Yes, they're traitors to their own people. They're Esau, who sold their birthright for some red pottage. Esau, or Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. The difference between the Jews who sell out to Rome and the Jews who will eventually believe on their Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And here's another very stinging thing of why, why Satan and Roman Catholicism hate the Jew. 
John chapter 4. John chapter 4. There are those that's like, well, the Jews killed Jesus. The Jews handed Jesus over to the Roman government. Pilate wanted to release him, but Pilate caved in and had Jesus crucified and killed um, in accordance with prophecy, okay? That was going to happen, but it was Rome who killed Jesus. Pilate could have released him. Granted, in Isaiah 53, it was prophesied it was going to be that way, but Pilate, Rome, killed Jesus. Jesus said, those who delivered me onto you have the greater sin. Yeah, they, they are the tail, not the head. In accordance uh, with uh, Deuteronomy that we've already looked at, yes. But he hasn't forsaken his people, yes. Salvation, okay. John chapter 4, verses 19 on to verse 26. The woman saith unto him, this woman, by the way, okay, this woman, by the way, the woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain, Mount Zion, nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We, Jesus attributing himself to whom? The Jews. The Hebrews. We know what we worship. And here's what the Catholic Satan hates. For salvation is of the Jews. And scripturally, Jews were Hebrews who practiced the scriptural Judaism. Okay? So when our Lord says salvation is of the Jews, he's talking about the Hebrews who practiced the scriptural law. And of the Hebrews, Jews came our Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is of the Jews. Judah, our Lord sprang from Judah. So Jews in scripture are those who practiced the scriptural Judaism. Okay? So when he says salvation is of the Jews, he's meaning of the Hebrews. Okay? Salvation is of the Jews. Of Shem. Of Shem. The Hebrew. Not of Japheth. Not of Ham. But of Shem. It is the tent of Shem. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And see, in verse 22, for salvation is of the Jews. Um, he attributed himself unto the, the Jew. Uh, John chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 13. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own. The Jews, the Hebrews who were practicing the true Judaism, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God chose Israel. And from Israel came our Lord Jesus Christ, and God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, chose the way of the cross unto the Jew first, and also unto the Gentile. Okay? It is not the Jew 
who is in control of everything? It is the Jesuits. It is Roman Catholicism. Satan's church. Not the Jew. Not the Jew. Okay? There are many passages of scripture that we can look at. Also, for example, like I mentioned to you, Ezekiel chapter 37. Okay? The restoration of Israel. God is not done with Israel. We have been grafted into the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. Okay? And also, in Isaiah. Let's go there. Isaiah chapter 59. Okay? There are also numerous Psalms. Okay? Let's, let's, oh, we got time. Let's go to Psalm, Psalm 134. Psalm 134, okay? Hopefully we can finish Psalm 134 before three hours is up. Behold, Psalm 134. Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. Zion. The mountain of the Lord, which is, which is synonymous with what? Israel, the Jew, Jerusalem. We, we read in Romans 11 already, the deliverer shall come out of Zion. Okay? Okay? All right, but Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah chapter 59. Verses 16 unto the close of the chapter. Isaiah 59, verse 16, unto the close of the chapter. And he saw that there was no man, and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness it, it sustained him. God who shall provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. His own arm. What does that say? Therefore his arm brought, brought salvation unto him. Talking about Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and an helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, according, accordingly he will repay. Jesus is our judge. Jesus is our judge. He will judge you. Fury to his adversaries. Recompense with the sea and noun to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense. Sea, again, a noun. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer, our Lord Jesus Christ, shall come to Zion. And unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, Israel, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed said the Lord from henceforth and forever. Future fulfillment, restoration of Israel. You could read Amos chapter 9, which is the one of the best, uh, and Micah chapter 7. Okay? There are so many. The Jew cannot be the ruling power of this world today. It's The Jews do not run the banks. I mean, the Jews are allowed to run the banks, yes, but it's the Vatican that controls the banking system. The Federal Reserve was instituted by the Jesuits. The Federal Reserve is the Pope's personal bank, okay? Sosa's personal bank, okay? The Jesuits run the medical establishment. Yes, a lot of Jews are doctors, but it's the Jesuits that run the medical establishment, okay? It's the Jews that, uh, it's, it's the Jesuits, excuse me. It's the Jesuits that control the churches, not the Jews. All the nations are going to Francis, Sosa's front man. They're going to the Vatican, Rome, 
They're not going to the Jews, to Jerusalem, to Israel. It's Roman Catholicism that rules the world at this moment. And when we, the Church of the Living God, are redeemed, caught up, resurrected, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Oh boy. See, again, Satan is allowed to do this stuff right now. But when he who now letteth will let till he be taken out of the way, we, the Church of the Living God, be taken out of the way, then Satan, that restraint, is going to be let loose. And all of you who are left behind, may you be accounted of those of that great multitude of Revelation chapter 7, who wake up, and he, the son of perdition, who's going to be a Jew, in order to placate the Jewish people, um, Hopefully you're one of those that get exterminated right away and wake up. Because you're going to come to the uh, conclusion that these easy believers and devils have lied to you. And you're going to realize that we, the Church of the Living God, have been telling you the truth all along. Okay? I'm going to read to you an ex uh, something out of the secret history of the Jesuits. We're going to read the founding of the company. This is chapter 3 in the secret history of the Jesuit, Jesuits. I do have this PDF on the channel here. This is what I'm going to be reading you. Can you see that? And right here. Oh, and incidentally, Ignatius of Loyola... He was a Spaniard. He was Spanish. He was a Spaniard of Spain. Ignatius of Loyola was not a Hebrew. Um, <laughs> Ignatius in hell would be uh, rolling over and doing black backflips for those of you who work for the Vatican who say that um, Ignatius was a Hebrew. He would be, he's doing backflips in hell right now because you say that of him. Okay? The founding of the company. The Society of Jesus was constituted on Assumption Day in 1534 in the chapel of Notre Dame de Montmartre. Ignatius was then 44 years old. After communion, the Pucharist the animator and his com companions vowed to go to the Holy Land as soon as their studies were finished to convert the infidels. The following, year found, the following year found them in Rome, where the Pope, who was then organizing a cr crusade against the Turks with the German Emperor and the Republic of Venice, showed them how impossible their project was because of it. So Ignatius and his companions dedicated themselves to missionary work in Christian lands. In Venice, his apostolate roused against the suspicions of the Inquisition. The constitution of the Company of Jesus was at last drafted and approved by Rome by Paul III in 1540, and the Jesuits put themselves at the disposition of the Pope promising him unconditional obedience, teaching, confessing, preaching, and charitable work were the field of action for this new order. But foreign missions were not excluded, as in 1541, Francis, Francis Xavier and two companions left Lipson to go evangelize the Far East. In 1546, the political side of their career was launched when the Pope chose Leanes and Salmeron to represent him at the Council of Trent in the capacity of pontifical theologians. The Council of Trent. I have a copy of it, by the way. The decrees of the Council of Trent, which every Pope today swears to uphold. 
proving Vatican Council II is nothing but a lie. Okay. Mr. Bohemir writes, Then the order was employed by the Pope only on a temporary basis. But it performed its function with so much promptitude and zeal that, already under Paul III, it had implanted itself very firmly into all chosen kinds of activities and won the confidence of the cura for all time. This confidence was fully justified. The Jesuits and Lyanes, in particularly, in particular, together with their devoted friend, Cardinal Moron, became the cunning and untiring champions of pontifical authority and intangibility, and intangibility of the dogma during the three sessions of that council ending in 1562, where they came up with papal infallibility, that the Pope is infallible, that when he speaks ex cathedra, from the throne, from the chair, ex cathedra, that he speaks infallible. And who is the head pope today? Oh, that would be uh, Arturo Sosa, the black, the black pope, the head of the Jesuit order. By their clever maneuvers and dialects, they succeeded in defeating the opposition and all heretic claims, including marriage of priests, Communion with the two elements, use of the vernacular and services, they, yeah, the uh, common tongue, use of the vernacular and common uh, using common tongue. But they set themselves up by using only the Latin. Esoteric and esoteric, the initiated and the uninitiated, okay? Okay? Especially reform of the papacy. Reform of the papacy. What does that mean? Uh, the papacy never changes. The only thing that changes with the papacy, Roman Catholicism, is she gets worse over time. So yeah, it does change. Only the reform of convents was retained on the agenda. Lyanas himself, by a forceful counterattack, upheld pontifical infallibility. The Jesuits came up with that, by the way, which was promulgated three centuries later by the Vatican Council. The Holy See emerged strengthened from the crisis where it nearly foundered, thanks to the steadfast actions of the Jesuits. The term chosen by Paul III to describe this new order in his Bull of Authorization were then amply justified. Regem alesque militants. Whatever, ales, al, ecclesiae, regem ecclesiae militants. The fighting spirit developed more and more as time went on as, beside foreign missions, the activities of Loyola's sons started to concentrate on the souls of men especially among ruling classes. Politics are their main field of action. Who rules the world today? The Jews. No, the Jesuits, Roman Catholicism, Satan's church. As all the error efforts of these directors concentrate on one aim, the submission of the world to the papacy, to rule the world by the volition of a single man, that's what Napoleon Bonaparte said, and to attain this, and to attain this, the heads must be conquered first, the heads. The rulers of the nations, the presidents and kings, do they not all go to Francis? Do not all the heads of nations go to the Pope for an audience? Are they going to the um, Are they going to the Jews? Are they going to Israel? 
No. And to realize this ideal, two very important weapons. To be the confessors of the mighty and those in high places and the education of their children. Yeah. The target of the Jesuit is the child. And look at what they're doing. But to be confessors of the mighty and in those in high places. They go to the upper echelons. That does not mean that the Jesuit doesn't feed with the bottom feeders. That's what all you coadjutors do who work for the Jesuits. And yes, there are Jesuits themselves who work with us bottom feeders. Hello. I actually know of a few of you who are Jesuits. Yes, I do. Scum. But in that way, the present will be safe while the future is prepared. They've been doing this ever since the inception of the Jesuit order. To rule the world by the volition of a single man. Today it is Sosa. Soon it will be that man of sin, the son of perdition. To bring everybody under the head, the rule of the papacy. The world to be ruled by the papacy. It's not the Jews. When Ignatius died in 1556... His sons were working amongst pagans in India, China, Japan, the New World. But also and especially in Europe, France, so Southern and Western Germany, where they fought against the heresy in Spain, Portugal, Italy, and even good old England. Getting in by way of Ireland. Their history, full of vic... Vis, vic zix, Vicissitudes, V I C I S S I T U D E S, <laughs> will be of a Rome network, uh, will be of a Roman network they will constantly try to spread over the world, whose links will be forever torn and mended. Get a load of that. Their history, full of vicious physicious dudes will be of a Roman network 666 www hmm they will constantly try to spread over the world whose links <laughs> will be forever torn and mended it's the Jesuits not the Jews. It's the Jesuits. Catholicism that rules. Not the Jews. The Jews, unfortunately, some of them have sold themselves over to the Vatican. Roman Catholicism is the greatest threat and enemy to the Jew. You're truly a Hebrew? You're truly a Jew? We of the Church of the Living God who adhere to the authorized version of scripture, we're not your enemy. The Christians today, yes, they are your enemy. Why? Because they're linked to the Vatican. But we who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, we're not your enemy. We're not your enemy. Here's just a portion here is just a portion of the uh, of the uh, extreme oath of the Jesuit. I also have this very link in the uh, about section of the channel. Okay. The uh, here's just here's just a portion of what the superior says to the Jesuit about to take the ex extreme oath. Here's just a portion. And this will show you again how the Jesuits, Catholicism, sees the Jew. In the Secreta Monita, which link I also have on the channel here, um, the, the Jesuits refer to the Jews as perfidious Jews. Catholicism hates the Jew. The Jew does not rule the world. Verbatim, 
Here, this, this is what I'm going to read you, and then we're going to be done with this video. Okay, right here. This is what I'm going to read you, right where my fingers are. This little bracket here. What is that? What is that? My son, heretofore you have been taught to act the dissembler. Oh, that's what the Jesuits do. Among Roman Catholics, to be a Roman Catholic, to infiltrate, and to be a spy among your own brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man, mm. to isolate you, to turn everyone against you and you against everybody else. Hmm. Among the reformers, to be a reformer. Among the Huguenots, to be a Huguenot. Among the Calvinists, to be a Calvinist. To be a Calvinist. Among the Protestants, generally, to be a Protestant. And obtaining their confidence. to seek even to preach from their pulpits and to denounce with all vehemence in your nature our holy religion and the Pope. But they don't get into detail. That's the thing. And even to descend so low as to become a Jew among Jews. that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope. And that would be the Black Pope, Arturo Sosa. I won't bother you. You can check the link on the channel. Okay? I won't bother you with reading the rest of that. And see, these coadjutors who are point saying, this is Jews, this is Jews, these people are working for the Vatican, trying to give the Jews a bad name to make you lost people think, yeah, well, yes, Jews, it makes sense, right? No. We look in the scripture that gives proof that in Deuteronomy again, that the Jew can't be the head right now. That would be the Gentile who's being allowed of Satan, Roman Catholicism, to do what he will right now. It's not the Jew. It's the Jesuit. That's going to be it for this video. Lord willing, and I have faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father, Lord willing, I believe this has been proven to you beyond a shadow of a doubt. Of course, there's going to be you wicked Catholic coadjutor Jesuit devils who are going to, of course, that's what you're supposed to do. Your yea hath God said. The hope is that someone who is deceived, who thinks that, you know, because of something you've heard on one of these social media platforms, that it's the Jews. No, no. It's the Jesuits. It's Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism, not the Jew. Okay? Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, if um if you if you make it through the end of this, consider these things. Okay. According to God Himself, His Word, the authorized version of the scriptures, the Jew is not the head. The Jew is not the one playing being the puppet master. It's Roman Catholicism. The kings of the earth are not going to the Jews for an audience with the head rabbi. They're going to the Pope. Wake up, people. And do not fall for the lies of these infiltrating Jesuits and all their coadjutors. Don't fall for it. Okay? It's going to be it for this video. 
Thank you so much for watching this, if indeed you do. I hope you do. Um, I hope the Lord uh, opens some of your understanding on some of this stuff. Thank you. Thank you to the brothers and sisters in Christ, the Church of the Living God, those of you who pray for us, and we who pray for you. We pray for so many of you. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us. We need you. We need our Lord. And praise our Lord that through you, he is sustaining us. Thank you. And we will see you in the next video.